Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about, is Melbourne still um, an Australian city? Uh, after John Cleese's recent comments that London is no longer an English city. Hang around. All right, um, John Cleese, um, the great, uh, essentially, leader of Monty Python, um, recently came out and said that London uh, is no longer an English city, which, of course, is demographically true, as um, London is no longer um, uh, ethnically um, British. Um, it is now 45% to 55%, um, essentially, people from foreign countries. So what he said was quite true. Of course, the uh, liberal um, head, head melt has begun. But... Um, you know, it's a ter I mean, when you consider the whole history of the British Empire and the whole history of the British people in the last five or six hundred years, it's absolutely shocking that this has happened. Um, so, is Melbourne, which is obviously a British colony, um, this is how the country began. It certainly wasn't begun by the Aborigines, who had not even invented the wheel, let's be honest about that, who had no concept of even ownership, what the actual concept of ownership actually was. So the idea that they have any claim to this country is an absolute nonsense. So, yes, is um, Australia, which was built by British people and uh, some other people who arrived later we got some help early on from Chinese uh, immigrants and we got some help uh, obviously post-World War II from Italians, Greeks and um, some other Europeans who moved here. Um, you know, is it still an Australian city? Uh, I would say no. I don't know what the exact demographic figures are for Melbourne and Sydney and let's just talk about Melbourne. Um, I do believe that I think the demographic figures for all of Australia are something like 70% uh, are European and 30% uh, are different or other. Obviously in the countries it's mainly still Australian and that's one of the reasons I think we're all going to move to the country in the next 10 years I'd say because they're the only places in Australia that are still Australian but you know uh, I know I'm making plans to do that myself but like um, I think that it's terrible you go into the city of Melbourne now it's essentially a well it's essentially an Asian city now um, because uh, our, our major universities particularly Melbourne University um, uh, which was essentially built by Europeans over I don't know a hundred year period um, you know, to educate us, no longer does. It, it educates a wealthy Asian people from across Southeast Asia and China and other Asian countries who um, pay top dollar to send their children here. The Asians obviously are very smart people. Um, they understand the importance of um, education. They're extremely strict with their children. And, you know, the, the children essentially have to be economic, ec uh, sorry, educationally excellent or they are almost disowned by Asian families, which is probably a good idea, really. The Asians obviously know what's going on and they wish to rule the world. So they are, they are, they are very tough on their children and they, they send them here uh, to um, learn uh, and we um, essentially give up our um, education system to Asian people. Um, now I mean I don't necessarily think that maybe taking a, a 10 or even 20 percent um, obviously some of these people have a lot of money to offer and are happy to pay top dollar to be educated here. I would understand you, you, you cash in a little bit if you're a university and take 10 percent but this is the demographics of, uh, of Melbourne University of the major universities in, in the Melbourne greater area like La Trobe, like um, that I attended my old alma mater, and uh, like uh, Monash, you know, it's almost, I would say, 50 or 60% Asian and, 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 and other. And I would say maybe only about 30 or 40% are actually locals, uh, Australians or Europeans. So, you know, this is, this is a great, um, again, a great tragedy. And it's very much the same with um, the Melbourne CBD. The Melbourne CBD is under attack by Sudanese gangs, um, ethnic crime in Sydney, uh, you know, it's well known that the ethnic crime community is mainly dominated by the Lebanese community. Um, I ran a nightclub up in Sydney for many years. We would have police come in. I would say, yeah, I mean, look, I think the Sydney underground or Sydney organised crime was around, I think, 60 or 70 percent controlled by the Lebanese. Um, they began to invade the... Uh, um, the biker gangs that were originally, the banditos for example, they were originally um, almost neo-Nazi in their outlook, but due to money and stuff the Lebanese quickly got in there and they now essentially control many big biker gangs. Some old biker gangs are still the way they were, but uh, others are now controlled by the Lebanese. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a terrible situation what, what's been happening to our countries uh, and our major cities. Um, I don't believe Melbourne is uh, any longer an Australian city. I would say, I mean, I've travelled the world. Um, uh, I would say in some extent it's a little bit like Singapore, which uh, I think is about 50, 60 percent Asian and there's about 20 percent um, like Indian. And, uh, and then there's about a 20 or 30 percent who are Europeans who work in Singapore. And, and uh, so um, you know, uh, our CBD, I'm not saying the whole country, obviously, our major cities now 
I like that. Um, Singapore um, itself is actually a very run city because it's uh, run by an extremely um, strict form of uh, totalitarianism called Asian values. It's not a democracy. Well, is, they do technically have, um, but it's a strong nationalist kind of Asian politics. Um, and uh, Australia doesn't have this, so uh, it's a complete mess. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just seeing the, the, the literal destruction of, um, of our cities um, through mass immigration and um, through this, um, this disaster that's befallen us, which we have not fought.